Sorry guys, I was trying something different. It's not going to work, so I have to switch you around. Sorry. Okay, you guys can see me. Oh, technology. Um, I'm gonna try something somebody suggested I try, but it's not gonna work. So this is what you're <laughs> I'm gonna have to stu be stuck with. So, um, hello, thank you for joining me. Uh, a couple of things, well, one thing I wanna comment on is that um, with, and this is what I was trying to avoid, but it didn't work. Uh, when I say right, what is happening in the video is that it's flipping around. You're seeing a mirror image. So um, when I say right, it's really left. So if I try to change it in my brain when I'm instructing, it's gonna be more confusing than you just think having to translate it in your own mind. Oh, she's saying right, I mean left. But at the end of the day, it almost doesn't matter because no matter what we're doing, you're gonna be doing the other side. So uh, I've been trying not to even use right and left references as much as I, as I can in, in real life, but I know that they will kind of sneak in there. So uh, let's begin. So we're going to start, uh, I, I promise that we're gonna do a little extra work on the spine because like the rest of the world, you are um, probably spending a little bit more time seated. So you're gonna sit, well, so in terms, sorry, more and more thing, in terms of props, I have blocks. What I'm gonna ask you to get is something with a little bit of weight in it. So, handy them, a can of soup. Um, something that you can get your hands on. So I happen to have this water bottle that you know I use sometimes. So this is a good weight. The nice thing with that is you can adjust weight by the amount of uh, water that you add. Or I have here a little two pound weight or any amount of weight that you want but just something with a little bit of weight for some of the work that we're gonna do, be doing for the shoulders. Can somebody give me a wave or something? No worries, hi, okay, so everything's working. Alrighty, so let's begin. So we're gonna start seated, and I also have a bolster, but you know, a folded thick heavy blanket will do, a yoga block will do, anything that is going to allow you just to elevate your hips a little bit. Sit in a comfortable cross leg, Usually I would suggest going into the opposite than what your habit is. And just taking a moment here to place your fingertips on the floor or on your blanket and elevate and lengthen out your spine. So from the root of the pelvis, you're gonna lengthen up. From the root of the spine, you're gonna lengthen up. Front ribs in, close your eyes here, and just think about your spine in the center, that center axis, and can you make it longer? And if you think about it as a cylinder, as three-dimensional, can you lift it up and lengthen it on all sides? So the trunk, the sides, the back, and the front. So oftentimes, very common, we think we're lengthening the front, but we're actually dumping into the back. So these back ribs, lift them up. Make them as long as you can. You're gonna roll those shoulders back and elongate. So already you should feel a few inches taller. And from here, we're gonna start with some head rolls. So you're gonna drop your chin, take your chin to the right shoulder, and then take your ear to the back pocket, and then make a circle around nice and slow. Take your ear to the other back pocket, then take your chin to that shoulder and then bring it down. Lift it back up, go in reverse, tuck the chin. Let your ear, your chin go to the left, ear into that back pocket and circle it around like you're drawing a little arc on the ceiling with your chin. Ear to the other shoulder and then ear in the back pocket, bring it back. And then just do a couple of these on your own. So you're basically doing a neck roll, but you're doing it, you know, with a, little, with a lot of control 
and with purpose. So chin goes across, head tilts back, dropping that ear, bring it across. So keep going, I'm just gonna do a little bit of talking here. Don't be alarmed if you hear all kinds of crunching sounds. And it may actually be a little bit like, oh my God, what's going on there? So don't be alarmed with that. All I can tell you is that, I, I can't tell you what it is, but what I can tell you is since I've been doing these quite regular, like almost every day, that crunching sound has almost gone away. I can hear a little bit, but not like it used to be. And the other interesting thing is if I go a couple of days and I don't do it, then that crunching sound comes back. So don't be alarmed with those crunching sounds. And then finish up your last one. Then check in with your spine. When you were distracted with your body doing something else, did you lose anything in your spine? And try to get that lifting action one more time. You're gonna place your hands once again on the floor. We're gonna use these lower ribs as a guide. You're gonna move the rib cage to one side. So you're gonna feel one side puff out, the other side's gonna contract a little bit, and then go to the other side. And just go back and forth a few times. So the only thing that's moving is from the rib, the lower ribs, up and it's like my head's not moving either it's really only my thoracic cavity that i'm moving one side and the other one side and the other pause in the center and then it's like you're letting his front ribs come forward and then back front ribs come forward and back front ribs forward back and then can you let your rib cage make a circle. It's actually not really a circle, it's an oval, but just be happy to get movement. So now while you do this, pay attention to which side moves more than the other. Go in the other direction. I can definitely feel how on one side my rib cage moves more freely than on the other side. So do I want to do anything about it? Not drastically, I want to be aware of it. And I just want to try to get movement into both sides, even the side that doesn't want to move. And then we're going to pause here. Lift your head nice and tall. And then we're going to come back. You may as well do some shoulder blade work while we're sitting comfortably. Change the crossing of your legs so that you're relatively comfortable. I'm going to have my back to you so that you can see my shoulders. And let's start by just squeezing the shoulder blades together and moving them apart. So if, you're, um, if you want, you can actually keep your hands on the bolster or in the blanket or on the floor and try to isolate them to just the shoulder blades. Squeeze them together and then wrap them away. Protract, or sorry, retract, squeeze them together and then let them slide widely across your upper back. And then again, squeeze them in and then wrap them away. Pause, that's retraction and protraction. So now what I want you to do is a shoulder shrug. Let those arm bones lift up, do a shoulder shrug. And what I want you to be aware of is the shoulder blades that we just moved. Are they moving? They might be moving a tiny bit because they do, there is an attachment up here, but now I want you not to move the shoulders and can you lift the shoulder blades up and then can you pull them down? Lift them up, pull them down. So feel that's a completely different sensation as when you were lifting your arms. It's a smaller movement. The smaller the movements are, the more challenging it is to find. So lift those shoulder blades up and then pull them down. Lift them up, pull them down. Relax. So now what we're going to try to do is all four of them. You're going to squeeze them together, lift them up, protract them across your upper back, and then pull them down, then reset. Do it again. Squeeze them together, lift them up, pull them away, protract, and pull them down. Then if you've been doing this for a while, you might feel that you can get a bit of a circular action here. But it's not just my arm bones moving, I'm not a choo-choo train, it's really just the scapula. There's same actions and if you're finding it confusing or if you're so concentrating on the on the circle that you lose one of those movements go back and think of it more like a box every movement distinct when you've done a few of those you're going to go in reverse you're going to pull them down you're going to widen them lift them up and squeeze them together 
Again, you're gonna pull them down, protract them, lift them up, and squeeze them together. Down, wide, up, and squeeze. And then again, maybe here, you can find a bit of that circular action. If you can, again, if you're doing this for the first time, honestly, be thankful for any movement, any isolated movement that you get in the scapula. And if I was gonna leave you one thing to do, well, there's no such thing, they're all good. But moving your shoulder blades is going to be key in fighting this chronic condition that's prevalent in our society of tight shoulders. So you can do all kinds of things. You can massage, you can have your ball, rolling it around. But moving those shoulder blades, learning how to distinctly move those shoulder blades is going to be your longer term solution. So now you're gonna pause here. Now we're gonna come back to the shoulders and you're gonna take your arms out. We're gonna internally rotate that shoulder joint. So that deltoid is gonna to roll to the floor. And you can just picture here that humerus bone rolling in and then rolling out. Your choice, if you wanna do both at the same time, you can. Again, if you're newer to this, maybe just do one at a time. Internal rotation, external rotation. And the measurement is from that arm bone. Just picture it inside that little shallow socket in there, rotating. That arm bone is rotating. Yes, you're gonna feel the wrist, the elbow move and the wrist move, but they're secondary. They're only moving because the joint is moving. This is all joint work. And then open it up. Internal, external, internal, hold the internal, and then external. Hold the external, and then you're gonna reach that right arm. Let the rib cage go with that arm and internally rotate the other arm. And then externally rotate on one side, internal on the other, and reach the torso. Remember the spinal movement we did a moment ago, same action. Back to neutral, internal, external, you're leaning towards that externally rotated side, just the rib cage. Come back, external, internal, and go. Pelvis isn't moving, let's do two more. Internal, external, reach, bring it back, flip it over, other side, bring it back, flip, other side, last one, and then release, shake it out. So I'm gonna try this one. You'll see how poor my range of motion is, but that's okay. Part of our, our exploratory uh, purpose is just to find out what moves well and what doesn't move well. So you're gonna take those arms up. They call this, I don't know, I've always heard this called cactus or gate post, whatever you want it to be. But I want my elbows pretty much to stay in line and I wanna hold that external rotation. As I actually rotate, I'm also going to feel my shoulder plates depress a little bit, right? That's where I want them to stay. And they're not going to move. Those shoulder blades are gonna stay glued in your upper back. Then you're gonna internally rotate as far as you can. Keep going. At some point, that arm bone wants to come into an internal rotation and you're gonna stop just before that happens. Can you take it down a little bit more? Can you take it down a little bit more without dropping the elbow? And then take it back up. We're gonna do three more of these. So. Plant those shoulder blades and then start to bring it down. Bring it down, holding that external rotation. Hold that external, I don't know about you, but I find these a million times more difficult than the others with the arms straight, which means we have to do them both. And then let's do it again, internal. Internal, how far can you go without losing control of that shoulder joint? And then reach it and then shake it out. So you're gonna come off your setup here. Come onto your hands and knees. You're gonna set yourself up in tabletop. We're gonna do a little bit of work on the wrists and on the hands. So you're gonna lean back, lean back a little bit. And then from here, you're gonna lift the index fingers. I'm gonna tap the index fingers. Then you're going to come forward, keep tapping them come forward and as you get more forward, the movement's gonna get smaller. Keep going to the point where you're just still a little bit of movement. I'm almost losing it in my one side, but keep going, keep, keep tapping and go left. Pause, 
middle finger, tap. Then come forward, come forward. As far as you can, as long as you can still tap. Keep all the other fingers grounded and then take it back. Ring finger, tap. By the way, keep going. If they're not tapping, what I'm going to suggest you do, if they're kind of stuck to the ground, take your other hand and lift the finger up. This is just giving the brain a signal to say, oh, this is what you want me to do. And then eventually, with repetition, if they will, I guarantee it. Then again, start to take your weight forward until it's almost impossible to move. And then bring it back. Whew. Baby finger. But not without the other ones moving. Arms straight. I'm catching all my little compensations here. My arms want to bend. I don't want them to. And then come forward. Keep tapping. Keep tapping. Whew. Barely any movement. And then go back. Walk your hands in. Shake it out. So now we're going to leave the fingers or go to the toes. We're going to hop around the body a little bit tonight. So you're going to set yourself up with your toes curled under. All of them. Even the baby toe. At least you're trying to. And then from here, you're either going to stay more forward or you're going to try to sit back. If you don't do this often, you're going to hate me right now. But that's okay. I know it's only temporary. So a few things. If it really feels like your toes are going to break, keep some weight forward. So you're taking, it's still intense, but you're going to just de decrease the amount of intensity so it's tolerable. That's all you're going to do. And then, if you can, stay up. So if you're a runner or you walk, anything you do, we need... We need mobility in the toes for healthy walking. Watch a child when they move. We, we've got to keep those toes moving. So this may look extreme, but it's a really good little thing with therapy, toe therapy. Get those toes moving. And then you're going to come forward, stretch the toes back, tap them. I'm gonna do it one more time. Only this time we're gonna accompany it with the breath. Curl the toes under. Sit back. Can you elongate the spine? Can you give me five deep breaths? So start with a long exhale and then inhale. Exhale. Feel the rib cage expand with the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more full inhale. And then exhale. And then come forward. Point the toes. Top them out. Sit on your shins. So, few options here. If sitting on your shins is not happening, or it's not happening in a safe way, meaning like you feel that your knees are going to completely bust, elevate anything, put something there. Then part of your homework is to do this regularly until you can reduce the amount of space between your hips and your, and your uh, heels. So homework. Then if this is okay, you can remove your support. Then for those of us who want to try this, first you have to be comfortable here with your toes curled under. Then you're going to lean back and try to lift your knees. And then lower down. Do it again. Lift your knees. And lower down. One more time. Lift your knees. So rather than making your feet light, push them into the floor. Push. And then release. And from here, you're going to take your arms forward, extend the legs back. We're going to do something that has a technical name of ankle smush. So, you're going, this comes from my teacher. So you're going to point the toes back. I think you can see this. 
And then from here, you're going to try to rotate at the ankle joint, trying to have as much all the, the ankle, as much of the surface of the foot touch the floor. So you're going to be smushing the toes and you're going to be rotating the ankle, then go the other way. Pause, other side, extend the leg. So leg staying relatively straight and then we're going to go. Trying to get full range of motion. Just kind of swishing the toes, again rotating the ankles, both directions. And then release. Interlace your fingers and then just start making little roller coasters with your hands. You can turn or press the knuckles forward and back. Start moving them around. Then let's come back to the spine. You're going to set yourself up in tabletop. So shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. Let's just do one retraction and then one protraction. Then settle your spine somewhere in the middle. Let's start here with some pelvic tilts. Sitting bones lift, sitting bones drop. Then the next time your sitting bones drop, you're going to try to round your lower back. And then lower back rib lifts, middle thoracic lifts. Keep lifting, rounding those shoulder blades around your back and then tuck the chin. You're going to stay here in this spinal flex position and breathe into your lower back. And every time you breathe into your lower back, right where that lowest rib, those lowest ribs are, you're going to try to round it out even more. So you're trying to lift your lumbar spine to the ceiling. And the breath is very important here. The more you can breathe, you can create space in that lower back. And then we'll go the other way. Sitting bones lift, lumbar spine drops. Lower thoracic, middle thoracic, chest forward, chin up. Now want to keep the upper back in its arch and start at the bottom. Round the lower back. Pause here. Can you round the lower back a little bit more? Then lowest rib, middle ribs, all the way up, chin tucks. Again, we're going to take an extra breath here. Get a little bit more work in the, lum in the lumbar. Then go the other way. Lift your sitting bones up. It starts at the pelvis. Keep going, let your lumbar spine drop, thoracic, chin up, and then do one more on your own. Let's do one more on your own, trying to find that movement of the spine in what we call segmental, segmentation, which basically means you're trying to move every vertebra. Maybe at the start, you're, you'll, you'll aim for getting three or four to move. Trying to get as much differentiation, as much segmentation as you can, but knowing the goal for a healthy spine is really trying to get every vertebra to move. And then you're going to pause. You're going to move your hips back almost to a child's pose. And then lift your fingertips to the ceiling. Let your fingertips or your palms come to the floor. Take your weight forward and lift your wrists. And then we'll just do this three times. Take the weight back, lift, and then go. Last time. And then forward. So we're gonna come back to the spine. So believe it or not, even though we were trying to do it segmentally, we are probably compensating, probably moving things we shouldn't have moved. So this is a really great way to really isolate the movement into either the lumbar or, or into lumbar or the thoracic. And what you're going to see is that there's probably a lot less movement there than you had a moment ago. So we're going to interlace the fingers and head. Doesn't have to be on the ground, but you're you're here. And then from here, you're going to try to round only your thoracic. You're going to round the thoracic. And then bring it down. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I did it wrong. Sorry. Let's start again. 
only the lumbar. You're gonna drop the sitting bones around only the lumbar and then go the other way. And again, round only the lumbar and go the other way. One more. And then go. So now you're gonna just go back until your ribs are resting on your thigh. So now the lumbar is blocked, it can't move. From here, your arms are forward, you're gonna to try to round your thoracic and then extend your thoracic. Round and extend. Round, extend, do a couple more. And again, just try to feel here, does it feel different than when you were on your hands and knees, which will tell you how much compensation we're really bringing into play. And then pause. So now we're gonna come back to our hands and knees. And we're gonna do something that's called a barrel roll for the spine. Can you keep your hips relatively still and let your head move to one side while your rib cage goes to the other? So you're gonna feel one side of the rib cage puff out, the other side's gonna be a little bit contracted, and then go the other way. So just moving the side body. And then we're gonna to try to do this slowly. You're gonna move the rib cage to one side, you're gonna round your back and go to the other side. So you start to see here, there's a bit of a circular action in the spine. I'm trying to minimize, I can feel that my hips are moving, but I'm really trying to minimize and go the other way too. I'm trying to minimize I don't know if you'll see better from here. The hips moving. Make it a spinal movement. Good, and then go back. Shake out your wrists. So from here, we're gonna do hip cars, hip movement. So you're gonna start on your hands and knees Shoulder blades are protracted. Lift your right knee and squeeze your heel to the bum. Open the knee out, abduct, and then bring it back in. Open it out and bring it back in. Do this a few times. Just one action. You're moving it out to the side and bringing it back in. I want an ankle here. The next time you lift it up, we're gonna internally rotate and externally rotate. Internally rotate and externally rotate. Internal, thighs rolling in. External, thigh and knee are rolling out. Internal and external. And then pause. Other side. You reset. Get those shoulder blades protracting along your upper back. Hug the thigh in, open it out, A, B, duct, and then A, duct. Open it out and bring it in. Out, in, no movement on the other hip. Then again, you're gonna take it out, internally rotate and externally rotate. Internal, external internal, external, internal, external, and bring it down. So I hope that you have some cushy, um, something cushy underneath you. I have my yoga mat and I have a carpet, so I'm good. So if you don't, then I'm going to suggest that you take a couple of blankets or even pillows, but they should be you know, kind of even height. Because you don't, this can be pretty brutal on the knees. You're going to take your knees wide and feet together. Then you're going to take your weight forward. Think about a frog here. Then you can experiment here. You can have your feet together or your feet apart. Let's try with the feet together. And then from here, I don't want you, I want you to try to tuck the tailbone under. Coming into a little posterior tilt. Press your knees into the floor as much as you can, push them down. Push those knees down, you're gonna feel work happening around the hip joint. Push down, 
and then release. And now imagine that you're lifting your knees up. They're not going anywhere, but you're imagine you're lifting them up, different muscle fibers. And then pause. Do this one more time. We're gonna hold that good tension in the hip joints for about a count of 10. If you have to come out of it, please do. But try not to. So maybe take the knees a bit wider if you can. If you feel any pain that doesn't feel right, make an adjustment. So to make it deeper, you can take the weight more forward. That'll make it deeper. Take it further back to make it not so deep. Play with it. And then again, that posterior tilt. So the tailbone is tucking under. Push those knees into the floor. Push for one. Keep that tension. Two. Ribs in, belly in. Three. Four. Keep pushing down. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, push a little bit more. 10, and then lift up. You're not going anywhere. Find the muscle tension a different way. One, two, three, four, five. Keep breathing. Six, keep lifting. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. Sit back. Just try this, sit back. Knees are wide. And you sit back on your heels. It's okay, a little bit of hip work in. So again, for the amount of time that we're spending seated, back, hip joints, kind of get locked in one place. I'm just trying to move the parts that don't get moved too much. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna step the right foot forward. So you're in a, in a, in a low lunge position. So you're going to take, so your right leg is forward, you're going to take your other hand to that knee just to stabilize. So the pelvis is in a posterior tilt, your glutes are working on the left side. So the hand's there just to stabilize, your right arm is by your side, make that arm straight. I'm going to move back a bit so you can see, but you can pretty well see there. Okay, so now you're going to take that arm across your body. Imagine that the bicep's going to touch your chin. Take it up. Take it up as high as you can, keep that arm straight. And now you change direction. You're going to internally rotate to take that arm back, palm to the ceiling, and then lower it down. The back of your hand is at your hip. Go back the other way. You're in internal rotation here. Hold it here. Can you lift the palm even higher? Then externally rotate at the hip joint. You can't see, but I'm keeping my arm as straight as I, as I possibly can. Bring that arm around. Cross your chin and bring it back. One more, ready? Here we go. Keep that arm super straight. Don't think I can do this from down here, but let me just show. You take that arm across. Keep it straight, right here. Keep that arm straight, take it back as far as you can. Now when I want to start changing direction to finish my circle, I'm gonna move from that shoulder joint. Internally rotate. Take that arm back as high as you can back of your hand to your hip. Go the other way, take it back. Really work in those end ranges a little bit more. Take those hands, the hand a little bit higher, then externally rotate at the joint, bring the arm back, take it across, and let it come down. Just grease one shoulder joint, do the other one. Other leg forward. So other hand crosses at the knee just to give it a little bit of support. For me, it's my left side. Keep that arm straight, super straight. Then slide it across my body. I'm adducting, and then take it up as high as I can. Right here, keep that arm straight, and take it back as much as you can. Then when I need to change direction, I'm gonna internally rotate at the shoulder joint as we did earlier. Take that arm back, palm to the ceiling, and bring it down, palm facing away from you and then take it back, externally rotate. So you bring it up and over, across the body, and then back down. Do it again, cross over, up you go. Take that arm as far back as you can, internally rotate. Take it back around, as high as you can, back of your hand to your hip, and then go the other way, take it back, Externally rotate at the joint, bring it up, cross it over, 
and then lower it down. Shake it out. It should feel good. So you're going to take whatever weight you have. Again, options are if you have a little hand weight, can of soup, beans, whatever, or if you want something heavier, bottle of water, anything you have that you can hold on to that has a little bit of weight. When we get doing these, you might find that the weight's too much, in which case, try it without. Actually, let's try it without first, so we know what we're doing before we add the weight. Okay, so this is what's gonna look. You're gonna bend your legs. Then you're gonna have one hand at the knee, the other hand's going to be straight. You're gonna take that arm back. So first you're gonna find that external rotation, that shoulder. Take that arm back. Make a fist so that you have the sensation of carrying weight in that hand. So now you're gonna bend. The elbow stays at the ceiling. You're gonna bring that fist towards your hip. Then lift that arm as high as you can without changing the rotation of the shoulder. And then take that arm back. So straight the triceps are working hard. Then we're gonna do this again. Bring it in and straighten it out. That's all we're gonna do. So now, try it with weight. Try the lighter weight, especially if you're new to this. So, ready? I'm gonna start by actually rotating that shoulder, which by the way is also gonna, I'm gonna say a little bit of retraction in that shoulder, holding it here. Then start to lift that elbow as high as you can to the ceiling. You know, this is all shoulder extension work. And then take that arm back, holding it here. The shoulder blade doesn't move. The extra rotation stays. Take the arm a little higher. And then bend at the elbow only, bringing that fist to your hip, external, back you go. Lifting that arm a little higher. Bend at the elbow, lift the elbow even higher. And then do it again. Take that arm back a little higher. Elbow stays lifted. Lower down. Three more. Arm back straight. Tricep on fire. Hold the arm a little higher. And then bring it back in. One more. Did I say one or two more? I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Do as many as you want. Hold that external rotation. Take that arm higher. Bend. Let's do one for good measure. Up you go. Lift. Really work for that external rotation. This is where that great work is for the shoulder joint. And then lower and then release. You should feel like you worked a lot around that shoulder joint. This is really, this is really great work to support the joint to avoid rotator cuff issues and effects of rounding, spending more time working that external rotation. So let's do the other side. So you're going to bend, hand is resting at your knee. So again, you're going to start by pulling that shoulder blade in and lifting the elbow up. Then reinforce that external rotation. The whole key is holding that external rotation. And then take that arm back. Keep that external rotation. Lift the elbow and lower. Bend the, leg, oh, the arm only to 90 degrees, so the fist is coming towards your hip. And then take it back. Take it back. Lift it up. And then bring it down. Lift the elbow. Go back. So if I lift too much, I'm going to dump into my internal rotation. I'm going to hold that external rotation by my limit. How much can I Hold the external rotation, lift the arm, and then bend elbow only. Take it back. Hold that external rotation. Can the arm go higher? Can you keep that elbow lifted as you lower down? And then take it back. Do three more. Lift. Hold. Bend the elbow. Keep lifting the elbow when the arm bends. And then two more. Take it back. Reinforce the external, lift the elbow, let the hand come to the hip, and then take it back. Last one, make it a good one. Bend, lift that elbow to its maximum. Take it back, lift the elbow, and lower it down. Shake it up. And then
then from here, we're going to come down to seated. Take your feet about the width of the mat. We're going to internally rotate the femur bones and externally rotate. Internal, external. Internal, external. By the way, when you did that shoulder work, don't be alarmed if you were trembling. If you're putting a lot of effort into holding, going to the end ranges, it's really common. My, I was trembling there, working that hard. So you don't need a lot of weight, even without any weight at all. You can get that feeling of really working. This is strengthening the joints, which are so precious. So let's come back to our hip cars. You're gonna come back onto your hands and knees. We're gonna do the full thing this time. So you're starting your tabletop position, shoulder blades are going to be protracted, draw the front ribs in. So pull the leg into the chest, doesn't matter which one because we're going to do them both. Pull it in, then open it out as high as you can, then take it towards the armpit, take it back a little bit, internally rotate, knee drops, foot lifts, then take that thigh as high as you can without affecting your spine, then take it out, take it back, actually rotate, knee to the armpit. Take it out, internally rotate, and bring it forward. Other side, ready? Hug the thigh in, abduct, and then lift the knee to the armpit. Take it back a little bit, internally rotate, externally rotate, internal, take the thigh up, some hip extension, feel the glutes working, and then externally rotate, bring it forward, bring it back, internally rotate, as you come into hip extension, lift the thigh, and then lower it down. Take your hips back, pause here, and then take your weight forward, and we'll come back to sit. So you're going to wrap your arm under one of the legs, doesn't matter which one, and you're going to lift that leg up. From here, you're going to hold the hand on the opposite upper arm, just for support, some support. We're just going to do some ankle circles. You're going to start by pointing the toes to the floor, lifting the toes to the ceiling, turning your toes into center, and then turning them out. And then make three beautiful circles. Visiting each of those ranges of motion in to their full range. Let's do a few in one direction and a few in the other. And then pause. Keep your foot flexed this time. Take your hand to the shin, to the tibia. And you're going to just rotate the tibia. You're going to feel that shin bone move out and then roll in. So this is a little bit of rotation in the knee joint. So we don't want to rotate it out of proportion, but there is some rotational capacity in the knee. So we want to encourage the range that should be there to be there. And you might find it's not moving. So keep doing this. Again, I'm kind of greasing that knee joint. And then we'll do the other side. So you're going to hook the other arm under, take it across so you're holding on to the opposite arm. This time the knee's not moving, it's all ankle. So start by pointing the toes to the floor and then lifting the toes to the, to the knee. Turn the toes in, turn them out. And then start with that circle. Visiting each of those ranges of motion. And then doing a few, of course, in the other direction. Pause, keep the foot flexed, pad the shin bone, and rotate. Notice how your foot wants to come along for the ride. Try not to move the foot. It's really only that tibia, that shin bone. You're gonna feel, you're gonna feel big rotation in the knees, not like the hip joint or the shoulder joint, but there is some rotation. So part of the 
work is to try to keep that rotation, whatever we have there, is to try to keep it there. And then pause. So, sorry, just doing a little time check. We got time. Okay, so we pa I promise more work on the spine. So we're going to do a twist. So you're going to bend one leg, bring it across. Sit nice and tall. So if when you're sitting in um, just, you know, simple seated, your pelvis is rolling back, elevate your hips. Elevate your hips, either on a, a bolster or blanket. Make sure whatever you're sitting on is firm so that you're not lopsided. Then you're going to bend one leg, cross it over. Wherever you are, you're going to make sure that that hip doesn't move. So when you bring that leg across, I'm not lifting up. I'm keeping both sitting bones just as grounded as when I'm sitting on both hips. Bring that leg up as much as you can. You're probably going to feel a stretch on that outer hip, which is all good also. You're going to take your opposite arm around that thigh. Take the same leg that you're bending around behind you. I want you to turn the hand out. I want you like you're opening a jar rotate. So I want you to be in external rotation in that back hand, holding it here, back hand, but back shoulder, hold that external rotation. The other elbow, you're going to pull it out to the side. So we're going to use our twist, we're going to use the shoulders to help us twist a little deeper. So now as I'm reaching my elbow out to the side, I'm going to try to let that shoulder blade protract with that elbow. And on the right side that I'm twisting towards, I'm going to retract my shoulder blade. Then with every inhale, I'm going to lengthen up to the center spine. And then with every exhale, I'm going to try to deepen the twist. My movement is happening from the rib cage, lowest ribs, middle ribs, upper rib cage. And if I can really get my shoulder blades to do some movement here, they're going to be like two helpful hands at your upper back. So try to get your shoulder blades to help you. The very last thing is your gaze can look over that back shoulder. But the main work, the key work, we want it to be in that thoracic. Three more breaths. Inhale, lengthen out your spine. And exhale. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take the twist a little deeper. One more big inhale, find space in the body with the inhale, and then on the exhale, last bit of twisting. Bring it back to center, pause, and you're going to feel lopsided. So let's straighten it up. Bring the other leg in, cross it over. Bring that foot as high to the hip as you can, but don't let that hip lift. So again, you might feel a nice little glute stretch. So if you've been really active or just, again, sitting a lot, this is all good. So again, it's like you're gonna turn, like you're opening a jar, you take that hand around behind you. So the fingertips are pointing to the other hip. Accidentally rotate that shoulder, then lengthen up to the spine. You know, immediately squeeze that shoulder blade into the spine, retracting. The other hand, you're gonna hold on to the leg, but reach that elbow out and try to protract, like to move that shoulder blade away from the spine. Then inhale, lengthen out your spine, and then start the twist. Think about the lower ribs moving, the middle rib cage moving, upper rib cage moving, and then inhale, lengthen it out. Exhale, rotate a little bit more. Can again, can you find that sensation of the shoulder blades helping you to rotate a little deeper. The very end, the cervical spine, the back of the neck can go. Long deep breath. So generally inhales, expand, exhales, contract. So with every inhale, can you lengthen out your spine, find space. And then with every exhale, let it go back. Two more deep breaths on your own. Trying to feel the breath move the entire rib cage all the way around. And 
and then slowly bring it back. Now you're even. Bend your legs and take your feet about the width of the mat or whatever, I mean a little bit wider than hip distance. You don't even need a mat for this work actually. Then you're going to place your elbows at the inner knees. So this is very similar work to what we did when we were in our frog position, only this is a bear. So you're going to push the elbows out, push out, now squeeze your knees in. I want you to use as much strength as you can to push those elbows out and then as much strength as you can find to squeeze the knees in. Hold that, hold, push and squeeze. Again, 10 deep breaths, hold that tension. You should feel work at the outer hip. You might pull a stretch at the inner thighs, but really it's that hip joint we're working on. That's two deep breaths. Three, four, keep that pressure, pushing and pulling. Six. So for the last two, can you push and pull a little harder? Push those elbows out, squeeze those knees in for one. And last one, whew, let it go. Shake out those legs. Last thing, have something, have something. Just some hip flexor work here. So you're going to take your something, whatever it is, your soup can, your weight, block, have a little bit of height to it. You don't want it to be too low. This is for the hip flexors. So preferably here, I'd like you to sit on the floor and let's try this. Try to sit with your shoulders over the hips and lift one leg up. Is that okay? Take your hands by your side. If when you lift that leg up, you end up doing one of these, even if just a little bit, then lean back. So you're better off leaning back and then when you move your leg, there's no more movement. So let's try. So whatever you're using, your thing is by the outer ankle. Lean back if you need to. Otherwise, your hands can still be out to the side, but you're sitting as upright as you can. Then you're committing to that. Nothing else is moving. Lift that leg up. Take it over. Gently wind it to the floor. Bring it up. Back to center. Lift it up. Out to the side. Both legs stay straight. We're going to do 100 of these. Ha ha. I think five. I think that was three, four, and last one. Shake it up. On the verge of cramping, if you're cramped, congratulations. Cramping is not a bad thing. It just means those muscles are working in a way that they're just not accustomed to. So have your bolst your block by the outer ankle, outer, other ankle, and a little, um, things might feel different when you lift one leg versus the other. So again, do a little test. Can you lift that leg up? So this is the hip flexors and this is strengthening them. So I know we think we need to stretch them, but we also need to strengthen. So really tight muscles are weak muscles. So strengthening them is sometimes even better than when we think we're stretching them. So Oftentimes when we think we're stretching them, we're not. This work, you can't go wrong. Lift that leg up, take it across, tap down lightly. If you're leaning back, lean back, but don't change anything else. Again, you're still trying to stay as upright as you can, moving only the leg. Last one, I think. If I'm not sure, if you're not sure you didn't even number, do an extra one and land it very slowly. And then shake it out. Ooh, lie down. Squeeze your thighs to your chest, rock from side to side. And then we're just gonna end with one last twist, squeezing your thighs to your chest, take your arms up, shoulder height, palms down. 
take both knees towards the right elbow and just going as far as you can here without the other shoulder lifting. The hip is gonna lift, but not the shoulder. Squeeze the knees together. Holding it here for a few breaths. And then come back, go over to the other side. Your hip is going to lift, but try not to lift the shoulder. Just taking it as far as you can. And then bring it back, squeeze the thighs to your chest, rocking from side to side. Rocking forward and back, whatever feels comfortable. Little closing sequence. And then I'm going to leave you. Instagram is pretty brutal. 60 minutes is 60 minutes. So you are going to take a rest. I know it's not yoga, but everyone loves Shavasana. So whatever you want to take a little rest before you move on. If there's other things you want to do right now, feel free to do them. Uh, before I get literally cut off here in about a minute, I want to thank you for joining me this evening. Um, if you want to do this again, it's up for 24 hours, so why not do it again tomorrow or later tonight? Anyway, again, thank you so much. I hope that everyone's staying safe, staying content, uh, finding something to do every day that makes us forget what's going on in the outside world, and uh, having faith that it'll all return to some normal, whatever that is, even if it's something different. Anyway, again, thank you so much.